it's Friday the 11th of August 2017 and the first part of today's programme is recorded boys and girls, cameraman as well. The only thing is he's got a little bit of a shake. I think it's the onset of Parkinson's disease, my good old mate. Uh, so say hello friend. Hello. Oh no, you didn't have to turn the camera around. Didn't oh, have to turn the camera around. Anyway, uh, Wendy wants to see... Hello, I'm here, I'm here. Wendy wants to see Ronnie's cats, which I've been promising her for some time now, boys and girls. So, um, what what are you doing now? now how, how can anyone see when I'm in the dark Ambient like that? You're not in the dark. Look, stand there. It's like a blooming dark room here, look, dear. Look, 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 come Except on, look, I can look. see you and I'll walk past. Look, what, what we, what, look, the, bl uh, the blue glow. Uh, well, we, we haven't come to the... F I wanted to show them your gladioli. Very beautiful. Look, I'll have to turn the lights back on for that. Look at those. I mean, they're a little bit... Oh, dear me. I don't know, about a couple of weeks old, something Mind like that. Was... A couple of weeks old. Hello, I'm here. I'm yeah, here. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, the, anyway. Just the... Uh, Hello. Hello. The right. Yeah. Wendy wants to see Ronnie's cats. Now, there's only two of them in at the moment. So if you just back up a little bit, you've got to keep me in focus, you see. Professional, dear. Professional. Professional. That's it. Keep it going. Like on the telly, you know, when the cameraman walks back and the person walks slowly uh, forward like that, pretending that it's all unrehearsed. So we're showing you two of Ronnie's cats this morning. Uh, so first of all, this is Lauren, and she is very, 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 very friendly. She lives to be picked up and cuddled and stroked, doesn't she? Hey, look at her. And she's just beautiful. What's the story of Lauren? She's a rescue. Speak loudly, dear, because you're on the other side of the microphone, oh, dear. Oh, okay. She's a rescue cat. Um, where I used to live, there was a... Uh, where was two... that? on Columbia Road Market in London. London. And there was there was uh, two men that lived downstairs from me. Not gays. Yes. Oh my god, gays. gays. Yeah. You and spoke to gays. Yep. How awful. And um they had they had two cats, this one and an old black cat. And they uh one of them got very ill and was in hospital for eleven months and he died. And then six weeks later the other one died. Well a broken heart in it. Yeah. And um they was, I put these into a, into a cattery for them. She's off now. Uh, I put these into a cattery for them. And, um... Shall we pick her up? You can pick her up if you like. She don't mind being picked up. No. This one, oh, come back. Oh, no, she's gone. <laughs> like the blue Peter cat. Yeah. And the other one, now let me tell you, for looks, this cat and personality, it gets 10 out of 10. This is Ralph. Look at Ralph. And he is beautiful. And he has been known to take a... Take a chunk out of someone's hand before because he didn't like them. What you got to do with cats is you go slowly, don't you, so that they know it's you. And this is uh, Ralph. He's a very, very big cat. Can you get all of him in there? Yeah, he's all in. If I put my hand there, then you get an idea of how big he yeah, actually he's is. He's squashed into that. that sofa. He is. He looks a bit smaller today, doesn't he? Yeah. But um, he is a and very Ralphie big cat. Ralphie has got very, very blue eyes, but you can't see because he's half asleep. Oh, look, a bit of blue there. Oh. How old is he now? Ralphie's six. Six. And do you remember when we, when you first got him, when you could remember. hold him, yeah. little ball of grey fur and those bright blue eyes? Yeah. In, in I've your got hand. pictures of that. I've got pictures of that. And um, yeah. what's anyway, the story of Ralph? So, no, I haven't finished with Lauren. So they, so the. Oh yes. The uh, people were going to put Lauren and the old black cat down. So at the same time, I was moving here. So I said no. Um, I'll take him with me. And uh, I had the old black cat, we used to call her Witch, and she used to lay in the garden. She was 22 when she died. Was she really? Yeah. Gosh. And uh, She's in my garden. We buried her in my garden, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, but we buried her in your garden. and um, She's got a rose bush on top of her. Yeah. And um, I brought her here. And, um, they, they had a, a, oh, the, about <laughs> 25 buds. I'm over here, dear. Yeah. They don't want to see just the cat, you know. They want to see me. Me. Mm. That's why they're watching this, to see me, I keep telling yeah. you. Millions of people so, all over the world. Yeah, so um, unfortunately, uh, the old girl got a, a tumour in her mouth. and yeah. It was very big, weren't it? Yeah, it was very big. And she lost a lot of weight very that. quickly, so she went to the vets and... Uh, and what about Ralph's story? Where now, did Ralph, you find him? Now, the twins that have hidden somewhere... The two gingers, because he's two got two gingers, ginger cats as well. Cats. Said, yeah. You might have to have pictures of those. No, we'll um, get them next time when they're, when they're, when they're not hiding. Yeah. Um, you look very red in this picture. Are you sure one of them's not on the bed? Maybe. We'll one of them's out. out. Louis's mm -hmm. out. Mm. Um, uh, that when we used to go on holiday, we used to leave them with this woman. 
and the cattery was wonderful, but the house... Oh, it was terrible. No. A dirty chimpan no. on a dirty cooker. What, worse than this? Worse than your place? This, this, is, a, this is a luxury, a luxury house. Say, have you ever cleaned in here? Do you own a Hoover? Uh, I don't, I Hoover. don't, I don't Hoover. clean. I have, a, I have a cleaner called Claire. Oh. Oh. Occasionally. Um, then she can be bothered. Um, and one of her cats got out and got pregnant. And um, there was three kittens. Two black and white ones where the white hair was really short and the black hair was really long. Oh. And then there was Ralph, this grey, minky ball of fur with blue eyes. <laughs> and he'd come to live with us. And he's, he's, been lovely, with us ever, he's been with us ever since. He's lovely. And we absolutely love him. Give him cuddles from his dad. Who don't, will he he oh. doesn't like being picked up, though, does he? No, he, he doesn't. He really like, doesn't like being picked he, up, this one. He doesn't like being picked up, but he likes this. He had a tick the other day here. Ooh. Little tick. Was it big? It was, it was huge. Ugly like, things, aren't they? Ugly. Ugly, yeah. I pulled it off. It's got a little scab there. Poor little sausage. Lovely. Aren't you? Look. Come well, on. thank you very much for showing us two of your cats today. Well, I don't know where the other one is. Maybe we should uh, pause and go upstairs and see if one's on the bed. Or leave it till next time. We'll leave it till next so, time. That'll give people something to look forward to. Yeah. Not that they don't look forward to my stories. No, not at all. Thank you. Uh, before we go... Yes. We do have two new members of the household. Oh, yes. We have Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Tweedledum and, and Tweedledee. We still have a big, we still have a big one the in big there. One oh, he's at the top. Bulgari, his name is. Bulgari? Why is he Bulgari? called Bulgari? Because that's his name. Um, when we first moved here, this is called a bi-orb. An um, orb? A bi-orb. Oh, an orb. And um, it's, it's lovely. It's a big 60-litre tank. And um, we bought f five, four goldfish... And unfortunately, three of them have recently died. I had them five oh. years, so that's not bad. Is that since bad. you come back off holiday? Yeah. Maybe well, I'll give them too much to eat. No, 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 no. There was, there was a, I never give them your fish before. food, you know. Oh, well, no. I, I, I bought proper food from the shop and chopped it up and put it in there. Oh, no, dear. Um, it went off at one point. Yeah. And um, so I, I went to the... Went and I, I couldn't resist buying two more. And the guy in the shop said, buy them now, because otherwise... He will get used to being on his own and he won't like them. But they get on really well. They all swim around together and, they, you know, the big one swims through the bubbles, which is quite funny. He seems to like that. He, he seems to tickle. And the two little ones are just, just swimming around all Do the time. Do you like being tickled? No, I hate it. Don't no. touch me. Don't, Don't touch me. Tickle. No, no touching. Anyway, um, that's all anyway, from Ronnie's house. Wait, wait. Can we go, dear? No. Before we go, you will be invited back to see the two gingers and the garden. As created by myself, much nicer than Chris Rea. Um Yeah, very nice. Are Thank you holding? Are you holding something in? Yes. Oh, okay. We have to go. Thank I've you. got terrible wind. I've got to go outside and pass wind. Back to the studio. There we are, Ronnie and his cats. There. That was a nice little opening to today's show, wasn't it? Huh? A little bit something a little bit different for you. There's another bit of video coming up shortly from someone else. It's all very exciting here. Yes. Indeed. Some of your messages coming through this morning. Good morning to Adam the Plumber, um, who spotted the, the additional bit on the opening video today uh, with uh, with the words, uh, little Katie the cat, rest in peace. So uh, thank you for spotting that, Adam. I thought we should do something like that. Good morning to Tim Partington, karaoke extraordinaire man, who is loving the new little video bits doing the countdown. Oh, well, they've been there for a few weeks, Tim. Just shows you how often you're there now, doesn't it? Huh? You only pop in now and again. Tim, we miss you. We miss you. We miss you, Tim. Good morning to AD. AD's there. Victus is on the Isle of Wight, who likes Ronnie's glow. Yes. He usually gets quite angry when he's lost 10 pence down the side of the sofa or something like that. Good morning to Shania. And Carmel, Carmel, Carmel's there as well. Uh, Carmel Ridgely, who we went to school with years ago. Ye I mean, years ago. Years ago. Yeah, when my age was in single figures. Good morning, Carmel. Uh, Shania's feeling better today after Wednesday, night, Wednesday night's disappointment because they had to cancel. Shania does a lot of stuff on the Isle of Wight um, to do with carnivals and things like that. And they had to cancel the one Wednesday night because of the rain. I mean, it was awful, wasn't it, Wednesday? Just awful. It went on and on and on. Got a little bit like these programmes, to be honest, doesn't it? 
Phone line open if you want to call in at some point. There it is, 0208 is the phone number, as it always is this morning, 0208 So yesterday, I'm very pleased to say, I did Chris Reardon DIY. And I did think about getting the camera out, but... I, I mean, I do tend to make a terrible mess out of DIY of things. And the only thing I had to do yesterday was put a new toilet roll holder up in the little toilet downstairs. OK, you would think that is a simple job. You know, a couple of, couple of holes, a <coughs> couple of raw plugs and a couple of screws fit it on like that. But the wall downstairs, it's a plasterboard. I think it's plasterboard. Then it's... Um, what are those big grey things? Breeze blocks, breeze blocks, and then it's bricks, you see. And the plasterboard is crap downstairs. It really is. And you drill the holes and you put the screws in, You put and the things come out again. Oh, and I made such a mess of it again. But I had a glue, not a glue gun, no more, it's called No More Nows which is better than the hot glue gun. And you put this thing in a, like a device and you squeeze it and this stuff comes out of it, and which is supposed to be, which is very sticky. Then you put it on the whatever you're fixing and put it on whatever you're fixing it to and it sticks. Yeah, I think you leave it 24 hours and it's it's full strength or something like that. Um, and uh, as always, not as easy as it looks. It was such a simple thing. So I've got my two raw plugs in there. I've got the screws in there. I'm putting the thing. I thought, oh, that feels, maybe I won't know. And out it came again. Oh, God. Why can't I do these DIY things? I just can't do them. So I got this glue thing. I pushed the screws back in, put glue on the back of the, um, on the back of the toilet roll, because it's like a big square, it's like a rectangular thing like that, with two holes, you see. You, you hook that over, pull it down a bit, and push it on. So I pushed that on, and I had to take that on and off, on and off, until I got it right. By this time, there's a lot of mess on the wall, through the glue, oh, and just, and it makes me so angry, I get so angry trying to do DIY, and I just cannot do it. There's blokes watching this now who are laughing their heads off. Yeah, you come and try and talk in, between, in front of an audience, you know, and make it look like you're not uh, Mr. Laddie. Uh, eh? And I just, just have so difficulty doing it. Eventually, I've got it into the position that I want it, uh, but it kept sliding. <laughs> It's the glue. It just kept sliding. So what I've done is put a little bit of gaffer tape around it. Hopefully, when I take the gaffer tape off, it won't pull the paint off the wall. But I know that's a possibility. So that's the best I've done. I've just been downstairs. It's now been on the wall for about... 12, 13, 14, 15, 16... About 17 hours now. So I reckon it will have stuck by now. And hopefully... That that will my toilet roll holder will be once again on the wall or the new toilet roll holder. The old one was blooming useless. It really was. It came with like two little screws like that, about that long. This toilet roll holder, which went in a tiny little square thing and it kind of stuck out like that. I mean, that's never going to stay on the wall, is it? Something like that. Useless. Absolutely useless. A little bit like me with DIY. I'm terrible at doing DIY, but there you go. It's one of those things. You can either do it or you can't. So that's it. So my, my no more. And that, that's the other thing. This no more nows thing, you kind of, it's like a long tube. It, it doesn't come in. It's not like a squeezy uh, toothpaste thing. It comes in like a long tube and you have to buy that. And you have to buy this thing to put it in, which is like a bit of metal. And you, you put it in this thing, squeeze the handle. OK, and the stuff comes out the other end and then you put it on whatever you're putting it on and stick it on the wall or wherever it's going. So I've done this. I've cut the end off and I'm squeezing it. Honestly, this this squeezing machine was so weak that the handle actually bent while I was squeezing the damn thing. I mean, how can you be selling something like that? I mean, it was only three quid, but it's it's not the point, you know. When you want to do a job and everything, and you start to, and there's something missing or something goes wrong, and it does my head in, I should, I'll have to get a bloke in to, just to put a toilet roll older on the wall. 
It's so annoying. Uh, Vectis, I believe, uh, has trouble with DIY as well. He says, I feel your pain. I cannot hit a nail in straight myself. No, or even a screw. <laughs> you know when I'm screwing, right, and you start the screw and it bends to the sides. How the hell does that happen? It doesn't happen when there's a workman trying to do stuff. I'll let you into a little secret. In front of here, in front of me here, behind the camera, so you can't see this, there are one, two, there's two large holes there where I, <laughs> where I tried to put the shelves up to hold the camera before. And the holes became too big, so I just moved it across a bit. They do it right in front of me there. Two holes in the blooming... It's plasterboard, isn't it? That's the problem. Plasterboard. It's crap. It's absolute crap. Oh, my sister's watching this morning. She says she can do DIY. I'm sure you can, sis. Well, why don't you come out here? You can paint my living room if you want to earn some money, sis. Do you want to earn my some money? Come and paint my living room. I haven't decided on the colour yet. Have you got any suggestions at all? I don't know. So that was my DIY thing. Then I was doing some gardening and I've got these three pots outside the house and they're behind something. So you can't really see the see the um, see the plants growing. They're actually from last year. They're trailing begonias, which are very nice. Now, they and, and they have grown again, which I didn't expect them to do because they were only in pots. They weren't looked after. And this is often the case with gardening. Right. You go and buy a plant and you give it so much attention and love and you look after it and you water it and you make sure it's all right and it dies. And it just and you think, why has that died? I've really looked after that plant. And then you get another plant, you think it's dead, you chuck it away and it grows on its own somewhere else. And you're thinking that was dead when I chucked it out or seeds. You chuck some seeds away and they suddenly sprout and grow and there's loads of flowers everywhere. Whereas the ones you've put in the little seed tray and looked after, nothing. Dead as a doornail. So I've got these begonias and they have grown quite a lot in the pot. But of course they can't trail over because the pots are on the ground. Well, I found a place for them. See if you can spot it in this exciting little picture. Can you see my trailing begonias on there? Go and have a quick look. Can you see? Go on, have a look. Where are they? Nope, not the ones in the hanging baskets. Morning, Diane. Diane joins us a little bit later. Better late than never, eh, hey, hey, Diane? Better late than ever. You missed the film at the beginning. You'll have to watch that again. <coughs> Can you see the trailing begonias? Yes, I know. I've got the ones in the hanging baskets. I've done all those myself this year. I'm really pleased with how the hanging baskets have come out this year. You, you actually can't see it too well in that photograph. That's the front of my house. Um, but but they are very, very big now, those, those uh, kind of orange and yellow ones. Now, the other ones, have you spotted them yet? They're on top of the right-hand door. Can you see them now? That's them. Three pots up there of trailing begonias that I shoved up there yesterday. I hope there's not too much wind here. Oh, my God, they'll all be blown down again. On to the post lady or, or postman downstairs, won't they? As they come and deliver my sacks of fan mail that arrive here every day of the week. <laughs> so that's what I did yesterday. So I did that. Um, came back up here on the computer and Adam has sent in a little video, boys and girls. Now, you may remember we did the impression of a bird yesterday. Ah! 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 Do you remember that? Well, I did say if you wanted to send in a little video of yourself doing an impression of a bird, then please feel free to do so. At the time, Adam was listening in his van, and he did do so. And here's what he sent in yesterday. Morning, Chris. Just driving to my next job. Ah! 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 At which point, I think he went flying off the road, unfortunately. So thank you for that, Adam. <laughs> I hope your van wasn't damaged too much, sir. <laughs> <gasps> it's just madness, isn't it? Went swimming yesterday. Uh, then last night, I went to watch Dunkirk, um, which is excellent. I have to say, it's an excellent film. It's it's a bit... It, uh, there's not much dialogue in it. 
The story is mainly told with pictures and sound effects. And it was a particular nasty sound effect which, which worked in the film, which seemed to seemed to come up every time there was something terrible was going to happen. But of course, um, it's about all the uh, the uh, uh, the battle at uh, Dunkirk where where the British and the French were all pushed back to the um, beach and were all waiting for ships to come and collect them. Uh, unfortunately, there weren't enough ships and the Germans bombed them on the beach while they were waiting to come home. And just just awful. Awful, awful story and torpedoes when they're in the boats and right at the end, little fishing boats, not big frigates from the army, little fishing boats came to rescue them all. And it was a it was a, 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 a rather harrowing story, really. But uh, as I say, not much dialogue in the film at all. It was mainly told with pictures um, and uh, sound effects. Good film. If you want to go and see it, I highly recommend that for some reason. And I can never work it out. Whenever I go and see a film, I want to go wee. Does anyone else have this problem? I don't know why. Don't know why. When I'm at work, right, I can go for four hours and not need to go to the wee. When I go to the cinema, for some unexplained reason, I always, I had to go four times during the film, not four, three times during the film last night. Once at the beginning, twice during the film, which was only two hours long. And then once again, when I came out, oh, I had to rush out to the toilet and go wee again. Does anyone else have that in the cinema? There must be something in my head telling you to get up and go to the toilet, I suppose. Why in the cinema, though? Why does that happen in the cinema? Anyone else have that problem? Do let us know. Call in if you want to. 020 8144 3477. Now, I did say on yesterday's show or the one before that I'd bought some new nice smelling things that I'm going to recommend to you now, boys and girls. First of all, this beautiful method. French lavender hand wash. OK, now you get this one, Waitrose. It's a pound. I think that's a pound. I'm sure that was only a pound. OK, and so much better than being spotted in one of those tacky old pound shops in it. Hang on a bit. I can't get it off now. I can smell it like that. Oh, that's lovely. So there we are. Method. French lavender hand wash, okay, from Waitrose. Something else from Waitrose. Now, this is the floor cleaner that I say that I said I spotted the other day. I walked past all the flash, all the flashes there. Now, Flash used to do a floor cleaner with Fabrice, which was quite nice, but I haven't seen it for a while. Here is my new floor cleaner Waitrose Ecological Flogger. Now, this isn't cheap. I got to tell you, this is about four pound fifty. All right, it's not. I know, shock horror. When the flash one is a pound, <laughs> this one is about four fifty. But you need so little of it because it's a. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Sh no, I won't be able to show you. It's. Oh, no, that is. I wish you could. Can you smell that? Hold it to the microphone. I wish you could smell this. It's absolutely delicious. You could, you could, I mean, if, it, if that's the only thing with this, this stuff that smells nice, it's always a bit of a worry if a child gets hold of it. Mind you, they'll be clean inside then, won't they? So this is it. Waitrose Ecological Floor Cleaner, Grapefruit and Eucalyptus. I think I said rosemary the other day. Grapefruit and Eucalyptus. Highly recommend it. It's the most beautiful smell. As I say, it's about £4.50, but... You only need about half a capful in your bowl of cleaning water or you will get soap suds everywhere. So go on, try it. Treat yourself. Next time your husband or your wife says, oh, I want to go out and buy you a little present today, go to Waitrose and get them some grapefruit and eucalyptus floor cleaner. Oh, yes. We are going up in the world now. <laughs> Good morning to Wendy who joins us this morning. Morning, Wendy. You missed all the cats at the beginning. There was a little video of, of Ronnie's cats, as you requested, done specially for you at the beginning of the show today. Dear. All right. <clears throat> now, um, what else have I got to tell you today? Oh, yes, I never forgot. I forgot. So last Sunday, <clears throat> there I was doing the karaoke at the Camden Eye, where we are every Sunday night. Oh, there might be another North London venue. 
coming soon to Thursday nights. Another North London karaoke venue coming soon to Thursday nights. I'm just waiting to hear back. We're going to give it a little trial there, OK? Um, and uh, outside the cams and I, not inside the pub. So we're set up and we've just started. And across the road, I observed this actually very good looking lad, about 26, 27 years old. And he's got no top on. And his trousers are just down a little bit too far, you know, from the waist. Lovely body. A little bit like my own, you know, flat, no fat hanging around the sides or anything like that. A little bit like my own body, but a bit younger than me by about 12, by about 18 years. So I'm ogling him, but he's drunk. And he's really drunk and he's walking around like this. You know how they walk around. Thank you, Wendy. Do you like this? Is one of my new shirts, isn't it? Nice, lovely. This, isn't it? Forty-two pounds special offer. Lovely. Look at my new shirt. So he's walking around like this, yeah, you know, and he's taking everyone on who's coming out of the tube station. He is standing on the steps opposite our pub, outside Camden Town tube station. So people are coming out. You're coming in. Come on in. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's have you. Everyone who was coming out, he was taking on. OK. People are just walking past or laughing as they walk past. And then this bloke comes past him in the street and he's, he stood in front of him. Going, yeah, come on. Come on, then. Come on, then. And I think the bloke told him where to go. And he said, oh, you want? And he's like, oh, you want some? You want some? Come on, come on. And he's gone like that. Right. And because he's so drunk, can't hit the bloke. He's like, oh, I like that. Like that. At which point, this other bloke has gone whack like that in his face. And he is out on the pavement. <laughs> it was very, very exciting. We were killing ourselves laughing watching all this going on. The bloke is seriously, he is completely knocked out cold and is now laying on the pavement in a heap. Yeah, that's how hard you are, mate. Well done. Well done to the other bloke who simply whacked him, watched him fall down and walked off. <laughs> and honestly, I'm sorry, he asked for that. He absolutely asked for that. But it seems to be a way of getting girls because two beautiful girls, one from the pub, rushed over the road to assist him. You know, they were all over him, honestly. Maybe I should try that myself. Maybe I could knock myself out and see if lads come over to help me. Would that work, do you think? So that was incident number one. <clears throat> incident number two was actually in the pub. Now, there's a couple of people going, oh, there were terrible fights in the pub Sunday night. No, there wasn't. There was no terrible fights in the pub on Sunday night. What happened is that I don't know, I, I don't know the story, but apparently some bloke slapped a girl around the face in the pub. <clears throat> and then she went for him. And that, that was it. No one else got involved. That was it. Two people did this. OK, so when you hear, oh, there's fights in there. No, there wasn't. There was one slap across the face. That was it. That was it. I don't know why. See, I don't know why the slap happened or anything like that. But that, that was the incident there. And then towards the end of the night, this really, really drunk bloke, he was all over the place, came into the pub and he nearly pulled over the DJ box because not not to do damage. He was simply hanging on to it, trying to what was that? Trying to keep himself upright, I think. Anyway, he got slung out in the end. So it was all very exciting on Sunday night. Make sure you come down and see the next show. Camden and I every Sunday for your karaoke and you can watch the show happening outside at the uh, tube station as well. OK. Fantastic, that is. Right, some little stories to tell you today. What have we got this morning? You're very quiet this morning, aren't you? You're keeping a little bit quiet this morning. Are you all right out there? A little bit depressed. Is it a bit too early for you? This Am I, I'm I too early for you this morning? Usually we're here around about 10 o'clock. I think we started about quarter past nine today, didn't we? Something like that, yeah. Early show today, early show today. Now, um, I don't know if uh, you've seen the video being uh, passed around on the news sites uh, yesterday at all about the the jogger. Did you see the jogger who was whacked? Um, so I beg your pardon. The um, jogging person who whacked 
someone uh, into the into the road on uh, uh, a couple of months ago. Did you see that? Basically, it's on Putney Bridge. I'll read your story. I'll read the story. Uh, police investigating the Putney jogger have made an arrest. Now, what happened? <clears throat> this bloke was jogging. Now, there's a couple of nasty people who are on our roads at the moment. One of them is cyclists. Now, I'm a cyclist myself, and I'm not like this. But they think they own the blooming road. They're really bad. Rude, aggressive and arrogant. Cyclists are terrible. Mind you, not as bad as some of the people driving the cars, perhaps. They're just as bad as well. Awful. So the bloke was jogging. And there was a woman who was on kind of... It's like a, he was jogging on a cycle. I think he was on a cycle lane, actually. Possibly a cycle lane. Pavement road. And there's a woman on the pavement going in the opposite direction. And he's got to her and get, and whacked her one in the side. At which point she's gone toppling over into the road at the same time a bus was coming the other way. And if you watch the video, you'll be able to see it in the Daily Mail or somewhere like that. Her head is so close to that bus driver and it was only the quick thinking of the bus driver, which you see on the video, suddenly swerved to one side. He must have missed her head by an inch. The woman was very... She should be dead. She was very, very lucky, I have to say. Anyone seen that? It's, it's terrible. Terrible. And it's one of these joggers, you see thinks he owns the road. No one else is allowed to use the road. It's like put some people in a swimming pool. They think they own the swimming pool. They want the whole lane to themselves. Selfish. The story this morning says uh, police investigating the Putney jogger who have made an arrest. Good. Whatever happens next, the keep fit freak. This is written by Jan Moore in the, this morning's Daily Mail. Whatever happens next, the keep fit freak. And that's exactly what it is. A freak. The keep fit freak who pushed a woman out of his way and into the path of a bus might think twice about doing his worst on the London streets again. The footage of the incident captured by traffic cameras was particularly shocking. One quick reflexes from the driver saved the 33-year-old woman from being run over, her skull pancaked by the near side wheel of a 12-ton double-decker bus packed with passengers. Honestly, if you saw the video, it is so close where her head came to that wheel. Yesterday's arrest, I'm so glad they got the bloke. Really pleased they got the bloke. Yesterday's arrest suggests that the police at least took the incident seriously. <clears throat> and thank goodness for that. In many quarters, this near death of an innocent pedestrian has been treated as a bit of a joke. There was no, there was a larky discussion of jogging etiquette on Radio 4's Today programme, where no one pointed out that jog rule number one should simply be thou shalt not kill. Meanwhile, Radio 2's Jeremy Vine is in trouble for starting a supposed to be hilarious online Twitter poll to guess the profession of the jogger. Jeremy's theory is that the man is a banker because Jeremy doesn't like bankers. And it's just awful. So I'm so glad. I'm so glad that they got that bloke there. Um, completely unnecessary to whack someone in the side and send them into the path of a bus. You probably could see. I mean, you know, the do-gooders of this world. Oh, oh we might have had something on his mind. What, that, that, that gives him the right to whack someone in the side and send them hurtling into the path of a bus, does it? Terrible, terrible. Wendy says she saw that. It is, and it was terrible. It was terrible. So do have a little look at that yourself, boys, and um, see what you think. Now, here's one of my bugbearers in this morning's... On this morning's BBC website, actually. Drivers are avoiding parking spots that require payment by phone as cash remains a more popular way to pay, according to the AA. And I know this for a fact. <clears throat> I know this. I do it myself. I see a pay-by-phone thing, I go somewhere else. 
because it's not as easy as that. You can spend 15 minutes or more trying to pay by blooming phone. You'll find your parking spot, park your car, and then you go to this machine and there'll be a sign. How to pay. Dial this number. Enter your registration number, your car type and make, your credit card number, the amount you want to pay, and so it goes on and on. And they have made this so complicated, it's unbelievable. There is a way around this. Most of us have got smartphones now. Why can't we just take a picture of the of the of the car and then <clears throat> send it to, to 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 a number somewhere and that's it that would be it simply take a picture of your car and then email it or or text message it to wherever it's got to go to that would be the easiest way to do it but no no they make it as difficult as possible nothing can be easier than getting a little pound coin out of your pocket and putting it into a machine. How easy is that? How easy? But no, they something else that's been made complicated for us all. Uh, the AA, uh, the BBC website says uh, the motoring organisation, the AA, survey of sixteen thousand members suggests that seven out of ten would look for parking elsewhere rather than use pay by phone meters. The AA says people are put off by administration fees and voice-controlled phone payment systems. But council said that paying by phone was a quick and convenient option. No, it's not. Why do the council say stuff like that? It is not quick and is not convenient. How can they stand there and say that? Nearly 8 in 10 pensioners who responded to the AA survey said they would drive on rather than use these pay-by-phone parking places, the same proportion as drivers on low incomes. Uh, Jack Cousins, head of roads policy for the AA, says, not only can it be a struggle to find a space, but now when you do find one, you may be required to talk to an automated system to pay the charge. Not ideal if you've got an appointment or just want to get in and out quickly. Now, this is the thing. They, they, it's, not, it's not quick. I, seriously, it is not quick. Have you tried to do this? Pay by phone. It's a blooming pain. All providers should make it easier to pay for parking. Not everyone has a smartphone. Well, I think most people have now, don't they? Uh, to pay via an app. And not everyone is keen to talk to a robot to pay for an hour's stay. For the elderly and low-income drivers, pay-by-phone feels almost discriminatory. It's argued that while many drivers preferred to pay in cash, there was the disgruntlement that some parking machines did not accept the new 12-sided £1 coin and others didn't give change. So, I mean, I don't know if you've had experience of doing the park-by-telephone or anything like that. I, I have, and it, it's just a complete and utter pain. It really is. Mark Rittle uh, says, if they want to stop money being used, why not put a card payment machine on the street? Yeah, you could do that. As long as it's easy, Mark. It's got to be easy. <clears throat> I mean, typing your car thing in. Of course, we all, I, I've always had a problem with the, with the number O. Is it a number? Or is it a letter? O. And you hit the wrong one and, you know, oh, no, you've put the wrong thing in. That's a £100 fine, please. It's not easy at all. Or, I mean, I, I have seen credit card machines, which are a little bit better, I suppose. You put your credit in, pull it out again, and a ticket comes out and you put it on your windscreen. That's OK, isn't it? What is pay-by-phone business? Um, Dennis Granger said there are apps that do that. Once you've registered, it takes seconds. Well, perhaps, yes, Dennis, but you've got to register. Remember when you registered, you obviously do it. Do you remember that first registration? It's a pain in the bum. It really is. Click, uh, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, God. No. Back to cash. That's what we need to do. Back to cash. 
Um, <clears throat> on the subject of cyclists, Stuart said, cyclists make my blood boil. Was hit from behind by one once on a blooming pavement and they laughed as they rode off. I don't behave like that on my bike. No, and neither do I. Neither do I. And I stop it. Well, actually, you know, I don't I don't go through lights here. We have cycle lanes all over Bracknell, so it's OK. But uh, I go to Wokingham and if I go to uh, if I get to a red light, I stop at the red light. The worst place in London has got to be that old street roundabout. Ever tried to go round that with those cyclists? They're an absolute menace, cyclists on the road. Mark says, I can't stand pay by phone. Done it a few times and it takes such a long time to do. Yeah, it does, Mark. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Anyway, there we are, boys and girls. Okie doke. Um... Yes, uh, Mark's got a good point. You need how many apps or phone numbers? Everywhere is different companies. Yeah, they do, don't they? Yeah, they do. Chris Wood, I says, good morning, Chris. Nice to see you. Sorry not being around, but being busy cycling. <laughs> have you got a bike, Chris? You cycle over to my house sometime. Come and have a bit of lunch with me. I'll cook you something nice and vegetarian, all right? No dead animals, dear. No dead animals. All right. Um... Do you know, I think I'm going to have to start turning my phone off at night. I'm starting to get dodgy calls. I, I've had it before, to be honest, um, <clears throat> where the phone keeps ringing at night time. So I think I'm going to have to start um, turning on my, off my phone at night. I had to change my number once. Trouble is, you know, I've got the my number on all the bits and pieces, you know, for advertising, you know, get to get work and that sort of thing. I do actually have two phones. I've got one for... Uh, family and my best mate he's the only one on there and the rest is all family and I've got one for work which is the one that I generally give out to people but I'm starting to get funny phone calls now so it looks like I'm going to have to turn my phone off at night again I did that last I did that I've had to do that before oh it's a nightmare and you get sometimes stalkers I've had stalkers before as well oh yes and the phone just rings and rings and rings. it's all very strange and mysterious isn't it so turning my phone off now at night um that's what my agent said anyway. I've got, did you know I had an agent? I, not not all my work comes from the agent. Just just a little bit of the work. And uh, she often says, you know, you need to turn your phone off. If you're not working, you turn that phone off and that's the end of it. So I think I'm going to have to uh, uh, do that. Right. Um, let's have a look here. OK, today's birthdays, boys and girls. Oh, no, just a minute. One more story. One more story. One more story. Now, I, I, I'm doing my best to put you off going holiday abroad. We often have the stories of the airlines that have lost bags or you've been delayed or something terrible, car broken down on the way to the airport. Well, this morning, how about this one? And it's a sad story. A grandma has died in her son's arms after being attacked by a hippopotamus in Tanzania. The lady, 75, died after the incident at a safari park on Saturday. She had been posted excitedly about witnessing the mass migration of animals on her trip to uh, Facebook only previously, uh, uh, only a couple of hours previously. Uh, the lady, a former nurse and well-respected um, lady from Michigan, according to one friend, Carol and her family had previously visited Italy and Turkey before the trip to Tanzania. She was attacked by a hippo and died in her son's arms. So there is yet another excuse, another excuse for you not to go abroad. Stay in this country. <coughs> Wonderful places to visit. Countryside, get up there in the uh, highlands of Scotland or the Brecon Beacons in Wales or the Lake District. You actually don't have to go far. Beach holiday, oh, come on. There's loads of places. If you like it a bit loud and in your face, Brighton. If you like it a bit quieter, Brucklesham Bay. Holiday camps, Butlins, Pontins, or do like I do, caravan holidays, Haven holidays, or Hara Cottage. No need to get on a plane, all that worry. Oh, you've got to be at the airport at four o'clock in the morning to get a plane three hours later, laying on those plastic seats in the airport. Stay in this country, my darlings. Stay in this country. 
Okay, stop going. As a, you get eaten by a hippo if you go to Tanzania. Tanzania. Eaten by a hippo. God, terrible. How do you get so... How do they allow you to get so close to the hippo? That's the question, isn't it? Hmm? Awful. Awful. All righty, let's do today's birthdays then. And um, then I shall commence my day's activities. Oh, I've got a bit of DIY today. bit of DIY. I've decided <coughs> to put the butterflies on the wall outside. After all, so I'm going to do that. A lot of things. I've got to glue a couple of bits up on the wall there and uh, water some of the hanging baskets. So that's what I'm going to be doing, doing today. Um, where are we going? Just a moment. Where's my... Where's my, I can't find my birthdays. There they are. Oh, no. Is that a birthday? No, that's not a birthday. Oh. Well, oh, the birthday's not appeared on there today. Uh, events. Let's do that. Events. There we are. If you've only just joined the show this morning, good morning to you. Um, now, that's strange. I've only got Thursday's birthdays here. Why haven't Friday's birthdays come up on there? Or is that it there? Hang on. Could that be it? Are there no birthdays today? I don't think we've got any birthdays today. Isn't that, str isn't that strange and mysterious? Can anyone else... Oh, no, you'd, you'd get different birthdays to me, wouldn't you? So we've got, if I click on events, one minute. Wow. Events. Calendar, is it calendar? Uh, no. Birthdays. Birthdays. No, oh, we've got yesterdays and Saturdays, but nothing. There's no birthdays today. Oh, it's just you and me today. No birthdays. That doesn't give me an excuse to put on them, um, to put it on people's walls. Oh God! Well, please share the show on your on your um on your walls then, because I've got no excuse to put it on other people's walls this morning. <laughs> oh, never mind. Eh? Yeah, that's what I was saying. If you've only just joined the show today, um, go back to the beginning when when I finish. I'm about to finish now. Go back to the beginning and watch the little video of um of Ronnie's cats of two of Ronnie's cats this morning. Uh, which uh, Wendy asked for, so I've done that. Uh, Wendy says, I haven't been aboard for about 16 years. I hate it too. The land of hope and glory is my holiday haven. Land of hope and glory. Oh, we love that. I'd love to go to last night on the proms. Very difficult to get tickets for that one, unfortunately. And Vector says, don't hit a gas main while putting your butterflies up. Love is like a butterfly. La, da, 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 da. Right, that's it for the show today. Now you know it's Friday night. Friday night is music night, boys and girls. Join us tonight and every Friday at Central Station Bar in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. Uh, our karaoke starts at half past eight and finishes at 12 midnight. Come and sing us a song. Come on. Or you can come and watch some of our stars. And they are stars. They absolutely are stars. Everyone that comes on that stage, whether they can sing or not, is a star. Come and see our little stars of Friday night, tonight and every Friday at Central Station from 8.30pm. It looks like it's a nice day out there, so have a nice Friday. Uh, I'm going to go and have one more cup of tea and then I'm going up the swimming pool and put my stuff on the wall. Busy, busy, busy. It's best to be busy. And I'll see you soon. Cheerio now.